Hi everyone, Andrew Ambrosius for another episode of the Art of Business English podcast, where we help people like you get the language skills you need for doing business in English. My third installment of the three-part mini-series dedicated to terms which you might come across when dealing with diverse types of contracts, especially those related to employment. Now, as you will notice, along with specific legal vocabulary, I've also chosen to include in this episode, some adverbs, conjunctions, and phrases, which are commonly used to link and explain the clauses of a contract, and which may or might pose a challenge when trying to understand them. Now, if you haven't checked out episodes uh, 184 and 185, and you can check them out over at the blog on the artofbusinessenglish.com website, or you can check them on iTunes or Spotify, and make sure you subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss any future updates. Now, as always, I have provided you with the meaning and an example sentence for context. But one last thing, this list is pretty long, okay? So grab a pen and get ready to take some notes, or alternatively, you can just head over to the website and check out the full blog post. Okay, let's start learning. So get ready, some of these are quite technical. First one is, here in after, that's one word, here in after. And this basically means starting from this time and then in the future, or into the future. So a clerk, surveyor, and auditor have been appointed at a salary or remuneration to be here in after, meaning from this point forward, determined in accordance with the amount of work entailed. Entailed means involved. Next one's quite easy, it's subject matter. And subject matter means the things that are being talked or written about or used as the subject of a contract or a piece of art or whatever. You, know, you can have subject matter in many areas. An example sentence would be contracting authorities retain the possibility to define the subject matter of a contract or impose conditions relating to the execution of the contract. So you can see that some of this like vocabulary gets quite confusing, okay? Just even when you put it all in the same sentence together. So the thing is, it takes time to an experience with this type of language to understand them, but let's hope we can help you a little bit here. The next one is terms and conditions. Now terms and conditions is pretty common, uh, meaning basically that the clauses that are part of an agreement or an arrangement, or the features of any activity or idea. So you need to read the terms and conditions of everything you use. Apps have terms and conditions. So for example, he violated the terms and conditions of the agreement. So if you violate the terms and conditions, you break them, you don't follow the rules, basically. Next one is statutes. And statutes are a law or laws that have been formally approved and written down. So we have many statutes in law. For example, this statute would qualify them for grants to train talented young people. So in this case, a statute is like a law that allows people to receive a grant. Now, if you don't know what a grant is, a grant is like money that you get from the government to help you go about uh, doing something. So you can get a grant for public service or things like that. The next one is regulatory tool. A regulatory tool basically means the explicit state intervention in policy, plan, project, or program, or process in pursuit of specific societal outcomes. Okay, so quite a diff difficult uh, definition there, but you know, regulatory tools are things that governments use. So a common regulatory tool used by governments to help ensure accountability is to require the submission of reports. Okay, so that's something that we can use as a tool create to maintain the regulation. The next one is a verb to amend or amended. So to amend is to change the words of a text, especially a law or a legal document. So, you know, you can make many amendments or you can amend many legislations. So for example, the company was very hasty to amend or drop initiatives that did not work immediately. And if you want to drop something, it means you you remove it, you don't, you don't continue with it. The next one is duties or obligations. Now, your duties or your obligations are something 
that you have to do because it is part of your job or something that you feel is the right thing to do. And in a contract, it's what you're required to do as part of your job. So um, for example, his duties included photographing engineering projects such as bridges and airfields. That's part of the duties specified in the job or employment contract. The next one is to refrain from. Now this expression to refrain from may appear in a contract, uh, basically to avoid doing or stop yourself from doing something. For example, we call on all sides to refrain from any steps that could further aggravate the situation. So aggravate means make the situation worse. Okay, so refrain is to stop doing the things that will make it worse. Impair is the next word on my list. And to impair means to spoil something or make it weaker so that it is less effective. Okay, so a classic example of this is alcohol can impair your judgment and coordination. And that is why you should never drive after you have been drinking. Okay, don't do that because it's dangerous. Because alcohol impairs your judgment and your coordination. All right, next one on my list is pursuant to. And pursuant to basically is a fancy way of saying according to. According to is pretty standard, but pursuant to is a more legal and formal way of saying that. So an example is the committee will issue a decision within 15 days pursuant to rule 182. So rule 182 means they need to do something within 15 days. Next one is entitled to. And in a contract, you may be entitled to certain things. For example, it means to have a right to certain benefits or privileges. So you could be entitled to many bonuses. Another example is I understand that if I cancel after the 10 day period, I am not entitled to a full refund. So there's a contractual agreement about refund. The next one is a claim. So generally a claim means a legal right to own something such as a property or a business or to officially request payment from someone who is responsible for an injury or a loss. It's quite a broad definition of claim. For example, let me, let me give an example about contracts with employments. A breach of contract will give the employer the right to claim damages from the employee. This is very common in uh, football players contracts. You know, the, the employee wants to get the most for their investment in the player so they can claim that if they break the contract, they will need to compensate the employer some way. Let's dive in and look at the next one, which is deriving from. Now, deriving from or to derive from. To, der to derive from basically means to come from. Okay, it's a fancy way of saying to come from. So let me give you an example. Some of these risks will derive from conflicting interests, meaning they will come from conflicting interests. Easy, no? All right, next one is nominated or delegated by. Okay, so we can nominate or delegate someone in a contract for specific purposes. And this basically means to officially choose someone to do a particular job or task. For example, the candidate nominated by the board is chosen by secret ballot. Ballot is a vote. And his or her name is then communicated to the general committee or conference. So this is a way to uh, nominate someone. Comply with is on my list up next and that means to obey a particular rule or law or act in accordance to an agreement so we should all uh, apply you know comply with the law so an example the state's mining law requires mine operators to comply with local and uh, local land use regulations so mining companies must follow the rules of the local land use Okay, regulations of that area. Now the next one on my list is very common as well and it me it, it's on behalf of. Okay, on behalf of. If you know Spanish, it means in nombre de. Okay, and on behalf of basically means to represent a person or company or deal with their business for them. So you are doing something in their name, basically for them. You have permission to speak on their behalf. So the request is made on behalf of the executive director of the South Center. So the South Center executive director has given the person permission to make the request. Next one, in compliance with, and we must be in compliance with many things, which means to act according to law or an agreement, meaning you follow the thing that's agreed. Uh, an example is the company acted in compliance 
with the guidelines. The guidelines are the rules or the structure that makes uh, that you need to work within. Another one, shall remain property of. This is an expression. Shall is a formal way of saying will. Uh, and it means a clause which defines the ownership of a product or idea. For example, any tools or equipment provided to the employee to help them complete their work successfully shall remain the property of the company, meaning the company lends you the tools, but they're still the, tool, the, the tools still belong are, or are owned by the company. Next one is fulfillment. And this means doing something that is necessary or something that someone has wanted or promised to do. So we need to fulfill the obligations of, con of contracts in most cases. For example, the manufacturer guarantees heightened quality of all products, as well as fulfillment of the standards and requirements. So you might see this in a contract. You must meet, do what you say you're gonna do, basically. Another one is gainful. Now gainful means providing something useful, such as money or work. And an example is, this is a quite common one. The state is making significant efforts. We, when we say state, we mean the government. The state is making significant efforts to help welfare recipients find gainful employment, meaning you know people who are receiving benefits from the government, they're trying to help them find a real job. Next one is revoke. And revoke means to say officially that an agreement or permission or a law is no longer in effect. So it's being basically canceled. And an example of this could be, both of these agreements may be revoked at any time. So this is often in the contract, you know, the contract can be revoked or canceled at any time. Let's look at the next one, thereof. Another strange word, thereof means of or about the thing just mentioned. And this is very common in contracts. So it's about the thing we just spoke about. So please refer to the regulations and in particular articles 99 and 100 thereof, meaning what we said before. Another one, this one's really strange too insofar as, insofar as, and it means to the degree that, so it's a little bit confusing this expression, we don't use it very often in normal English. Insofar as the contractual relationship between the player and the club is affected in any aspect, the player hereby grants the club the irrevocable, exclusive, worldwide, and unlimited right to use and exploit his name, image, voice, appearance, performance, biographic material in any media, in any form, and for any and all purposes. So that's quite long, but you can see that insofar as means basically that the player in this case is handing over to, a, to the full degree, or to, the, to basically a, com, a complete extent they are passing all of their, with the contractual, in, within, the, within the, the limits of this contract, okay? They are basically passing over all of their uh, image rights to the club to let them use it for whatever purpose the club chooses. So there's an example of how insofar as works, okay? So it means to, to whatever degree, means within the, the scope or, or the degree of the contract. And talking of scope, that's my next word. Scope of, uh, that's very common as well in contracts, and it means the range of things that an activity or company, law, etc., deals with. So the scope in Spanish would be the alcance. So it's like the scope is everything involved in this, in this contract or in this agreement, okay? So for example, he involved himself in affairs or in, in activities beyond the scope of his job. So the person was getting involved in things that were not within the realm of their job. Okay, so scope is all the things included in whatever it is you're talking about, okay? Now, next one is prior to, okay? And this basically means before a particular time or event. So prior to, it's also very common. And here's an example. It is vital that boards, management, and shareholders fully appreciate the risks and rewards prior to any merger. So before any merger. And there we have it, my friends. There's my massive list today. I hope you found this mini series useful. I know there's a lot. 
and I hope it's helped you better understand the way a contract is drawn up and the language that's used. And as always, if you do have any questions or you would like to add your own terms to the list, then please don't hesitate to leave a message on, on my channel or you can drop me a message on the blog, of course. And guys, if you'd like to improve your English in a particular area, why don't you take a look at our private lessons program? Basically, we will be happy to design a course that's suited just specifically to your needs or your company's needs. We offer live online coaching. Basically, you can start with a 30 minute call or you can go up to a 90 minute call. Uh, you can join our, up with our team of experts. We'd be happy to provide you with a quote. For example, at the moment we're working on one of my signature programs uh, called Powerful Presentations. It's a really epic program on how to deliver presentations in English. But if you or your company need to work on any specific area like presentation skills, uh, improve your the quality and performance of meeting skills, we can develop asynchronous uh, online courses with live coaching sessions for you or your company. Just let us know, I've got everything here. I've been doing this for years and whatever type of program you need, just let me know, more than happy to help you out, okay? so. Check it out, you can, you can email me and I'll be happy to get in touch with you. Organize a free uh, you know, consultation call or Zoom chat, whatever, whatever suits you, okay? All right, people, well, that is it for me. I, can, I know that was a massive list, but there's been a lot of interesting vocabulary, I'm sure you will agree, over the, this three-part mini-series. Uh, and uh, let's see what we do next week. I've got to think of some new ideas. So, uh, so if you do have any questions or ideas for an episode, just send me an email. More than happy to prepare something for you. That's it for me, people. I will see you all next week for another episode of The Art of Business English. Take care. Bye for now.